What's up guys this is Foedin or FoTK and this video is going to show you how to create a water simulation so you're going to be using two programs uh, RealFlow and Cinema 4D um, you will have to download RealFlow you can get it off the internet um, I won't be able to provide links because I can't remember where I got it from I'm afraid um, so I'm just going to jump straight into it uh, basically you need to set up your scene in after uh, sorry in Cinema 4D first um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane. Um, if you want water to sort of run along the floor, you would need a plane. You cannot add a floor because it doesn't work. So you're going to have to use the plane to act as the floor. Um, so I'm basically going to build up a little scene right here. Um, just so I can show you just a little water simulation. I'm going to go into top view. And I'm going to just build a few objects uh, copy and paste, make that one smaller. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to make water run across the floor and avoid all of these areas. So there we go, we've got ourselves a little puzzle. Um, what we might want to do actually is just get a plane as well, put that at 90 degrees. And the same again, 90. Uh, basically, these will act as walls. There we go, that will do. And what we'll do is we'll, f you know, uh, flow the water from this angle inwards. And uh, so it'll crash into these blocks and then move around and whatnot and whatnot. Um, you can replace this with text or anything you want. Uh, this is just a, you know, tutorial purposes. So, what we're going to do now, we can go to plugins and come up to real flow. And you've got all these settings. What we need is, is RealFlow SD Exporter. And then once we've done that, you can either choose to add in various objects from your object manager in. Um, because I want it all, just click Add All. Very simple. Um, but if you wanted to leave the plane out, you can just click on Plane and then Remove. And it pops it back in this. But I'll just add it back in and use all of them. Um, also, you need to set your frames to 200. Um, because real flow, sorry, real flow uses um, default 200 frames, so you might as well do that and make sure that one's set to 200 as well. Uh, that should already come up, but that's all good. And then we just choose a safe uh, a place to save it. So I'm going to go desktop and just um, call it Tut for tutorial and save that to desktop and export. There we go. So now that's done. You might want to save your project here. Um, if you haven't got a slow computer, I'm going to keep mine up. Um, and then we can just pop into real float. And then that will boot itself up. Right here. And then where it says create new project, type it in. I'll just call it tut again. And create project. Right. As long as you keep everything to start, like to default, you know, all your stuff will be safe to users whatever your username is, and then scenes, and then what, you know, um, whatever you've called it and whatnot. Um, if you start changing all that, then things will be different later on. Um, so do your best to run along. It's not too difficult. Basically, what we need to do now is go, you know, import our little scene. So what we do is we come up to the little yellow box here. Also, to move around in 3D space, click Alt on your keyboard. Click and hold the left mouse stick, and you can rotate. And if you hold Alt and then click your right mouse button, you can move up and down to zoom in. And hold Alt and click your wheel mouse, the middle bit, just to, you know, scroll mouse, um, to pan it. And that's how you can sort of look around uh, the interface. Sorry, interface for RealFlow. So yeah, we want to come up to this yellow box here, click on it, and then come down to Import. And then what we want to do is we go on to go to our desktop because this is where our, we saved our tut. Um, and we want to just import that and then we can, there we go now you can sort of move around hold alt and see where about your scene is and we can see we've got the walls here and it is wireframe at the minute if you don't want a wireframe you can select all of these and click this button here set selected flat shaded so there we can see it's all nice and well it's easier to see I'll leave it at that and then what we want to do is we want to make water come in at this angle and hit the wall and whatnot. So the first thing you want to do is you come to this red 
little op option here and then go to uh, where is it? gravity. That's the first thing you do. And then you come up to the one next to it, the blue ones. And then these are all your emitters. So all of these will emit water, but I usually just go for circle. Um, it's just a lot easier and it does the job. Um, and as you can see, the circle has been created in the center of the... Um, what you got at, at the composition or the project. So what you want to do is you want to click the circle and then come up to the move tool. So it's kind of similar to Cinema 4D. You've got your objects and then you've got your move tools and whatnot and then all your extra buttons. Uh, come to the move tool and we want to move that into place, which will be around about here. There we go. Bring it down as well. And as you can see, the arrow is pointing down. That's the way it's going to be, you know, the direction of emitting. So we can go to our rotate tool and we can just rotate it so that's facing our wall or the direction you want to go in. So that's looking all good. What I will do is just move that back slightly. There we go. There we are. So if you now start simulating, with simulation buttons down here, you can see that all the particles are coming and this is, you know, how your water is going to react. So obviously it's going to be running off the edge of the plane. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Um, I'm just going to show you sort of the collision. You know, so, uh, real flow does the work for you, uh, which is nice. It's less hassle. Um, so yeah, that's all good. And then what, after you, you can simulate it and if everything's looking nice, which I think that's alright, it's not too bad. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to come up to circle and then you get all these uh, settings here. Now this is where, you know, render time will start to kick in. Um, but these settings is the ones I usually use uh, to create a realistic water animation. Um, so where it says uh, resolution, I'd usually bring that from 25 to 50. So I'll do... I'll do uh, 35 just for this tutorial. Uh, and then it'll come up with a warning message saying, you have changed the fluid simulation with the non-interpolation method. Interpolation is down here and you just want to set that to local. Oops. And then that fixes that problem. Uh, and then... Yeah, sorry, you know, that's fine. And once you've done those settings for the emitter, then to make this to look more water-like, you come up to this green button where it says Show Meshes Menu and go to Particle Mesh. And then it has a little plus sign and as you can see, the emitter is, you know, the child of this mesh object. And that makes it 3D basically. So then you can click on this, go to Filters and I usually click Yes. Um, and that's it guys. Um, then what you want to do is you want to simulate it. Um, so I'm going to now simulate mine and I'm going to come back to it when it's done because it will take time and it, you could be waiting 10 to 20 minutes just for this part. There we go guys, so I'm back. Um, sorry, I, what I had to do is I had to reduce the resolution to 15 because it, it was just going so slow. Usually I would leave it overnight if it was doing a good render. Um, unfortunately I just stopped it halfway. Um, it spent about 20 minutes doing this uh, or 30 minutes, I don't know. But uh, yeah, as you can see we've got sort of like a higher quality um, as if you would get if you'd done one. Uh, you can have a little test around yourself, um, but it is what we're going to work with. So um, now we've got that, what we need to do is we need to export it. So what you do is you go up to File and you go to um, Export and then Export All. And then it says Simulation Data is going to be exported. Now if I remember correctly, I, um, no, not no. I said that wrong. Sorry. As I mentioned earlier, that's better. Um, if you, as long as you keep RealFlow installed correctly and by default, if you come up to your C drive and then go to Users, go to your desktop. As you see, this is my editing computer. Um, and then you'll have a folder called Scenes. Um, you cl click onto that, and then you'll have your a folder of whatever you called it. I mean, this one I called Tut for tutorial, so it'll be in here. And then in Meshes, you should have all of these. And there we go. So what you want to do now is import these into Cinema 4D. So if we go back to Cinema 4D there, um, and come up to our plugins, and go to Real Flow, and then go to Real Flow Mesh Importer. 
There we go. And what you need to do is you go File Path. You click on that. And you go C Drive, Users, whatever your one is. You go to Scenes. Go to your folder, Meshes. And you just need to click the first one. And then that will automatically load in the rest. There we go. And make sure your start frame and end frame is the same. Hang on a minute. I've done something wrong. It's just eight frames. What? Why is that eight frames? That's not right, is it? Um, e right, let's try that one again. Let's go to export, export all. All my simulation data. What's going on here? Uh, I know why, because I had to, sorry. Um, what I done is I stopped the render um, because it was going so slow and then I created a new project and I created it new. Sorry, all the meshes will be in this one for me. I thought, what the fuck is going on here? So, yep, yeah, so, sorry, just swap folders, go up to scenes and go to new and go to meshes and the first one, open, that looks a lot better. And there we go, we have our water. I was puzzled then. Um, obviously, all this will be due to resolution and some other settings, but this is the basic um, simulation that you can get and as you can see the water hits the the bricks actually what I could do actually is I can now hide these so you can see where the water's flowing around there we go so it's not that's how you can do like a nice fluid simulation and then what you want to do is you can just go to window and then content browser and add in some materials once it loads there we go, so I'll do a light setup as well, so I will uh, I'll bring in an array light in and then I'll come down to visualize, go to materials uh, I'll go to floors and just import a wooden plank and then I'll go to liquid and a liquid will do, there we go so I'll shove the liquid on the actual particle mesh here and I'll put the wooden floor onto the bricks and the planes Actually, to be fair, uh, we'll just do it on the walls as well. It doesn't really matter. Um, but we will bring the length down so it looks quite nice. So that's thirty-eight percent. Bring that one down to thirty-eight percent. You got to keep your, you know, your composition looking nice. So it actually looks like floorboards. And I'll keep the bricks or the blocks the same. That doesn't really matter. Um, and now we got this, we can just start adding a few settings. So transparency, I can bring up a bit more. Um, I can add a HDRI, so you go to create, load material preset, visualize materials, and check that, and that's basically like a, an image of a sky. And I'm going to wrap that around a sky object, as you can see here. But then what I do is I right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, and go Scene by Camera. So we won't see it, however, the water will reflect the image, and it's a bit more realism to it. Uh, and now we've got our light as well. What we can do is we can just hover that above our water here. Um, that'll create some shadows and whatnot. And we can just go into our render settings, go to ambient occlusion and global illumination. And then we can come to global illumination, come to our irradiance cache. And the first two will set to low. Oops. There we go. And go back to options. And just to speed up the render, we're going to go ray depth to 7. Shadow depth to th 7 and reflection depth to 4. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to render this out. Uh, save, nothing. That will do, that will do, that will do. Current frame, yep. So we'll just do one frame of this. As you can see there. I'm not entirely sure how long this will take. I'm guessing around about a minute. Depends how much reflection you add, how much lighting you have. Um... And it should look, well, I say it'll look nice, but so far I'm seeing a problem. The water is too thick. It needs to be a lot more transparent. But you can definitely see the reflections on it. And the reason you can't see the reflections on this area, I think, is because the shadow is reflecting the wall, maybe. That's the wall. Yeah, alright, so as we can see here, we've seen there's a problem, so we're going to come back out of that, add a much more transparent look to it, and we're going to remove these walls, because the water doesn't touch it anyway, and that way we'll get full 
reflection. And we'll give that one another go. And see how this one turns out. So yeah, that was 47 seconds and it nearly done it. But it's, it's just too thick for me. I mean, it obviously looks a bit more like, I don't know, it's quite thick for water, I must admit. And these little blobs here, but that's all comes with this, within the settings of real flow. Um, and you can just have a little play around in the test, but bearing in mind the higher quality you make it, the slower you will go, and you probably would need a nice computer uh, to get some good, like, amazing results. Right, so here we go. This is a new one. So we've taken our walls out. Uh, if I just flip between the two, uh, the water is much more transparent, but obviously because this bit's light is because it's reflecting off black. So if I just kind of zoom in a little bit, and cut that off. That is what our water looks like, and I, I think that looks a lot better. So you've got the reflection from the sky, it's transparent, you can see the floorboards through it, and there'll also be shadows as well. Um, and you can increase the lighting if you wish to make it, the, you know, the scene rather nice. I think that's not too bad for water, actually. And obviously if that's animating, that'll be looking better. So that's the tutorial, guys. If you have any questions, pop them in the comment section as usual. I'll try and do some more tutorials on this, um, you know, if I'm going to be using it in projects and I'll just r like run you through. If you want to see this sort of water simulation in anything else, um, please pop it in the description. I'll do it again. You know, I'll do those tutorials. Um, just because I want to just upload a lot more. Hopefully, like, once every two days, at least. Uh, so there we go, guys. Please uh, like and comment. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.